Hello! Today I'm coming at you bare face and bushy-tailed and not so much bright-eyed because I'm tired. But that's okay, because we're going to talk about this big stack of books. The goal is to do every fifth week, every fifth Wednesday, I go over like the books that I've read, what I thought about them, what I'm currently reading, what I currently think about them, and any new books that I may have hauled that fall into the witchy category. There's going to be a couple in here that aren't like witchy, like they're not specifically witchy, but I still put them in here because they supplement my practice in one way or another, and I'll talk about that. Um, but I already have one of these on my channel, and I'll try to link it above and or below. Thanks for joining. Let's go ahead and jump into this. So the first book that I have finished since my last Witchy Reads update was Natural Magic, Spells, Enchantments, and Personal Growth by Pamela Ball. And let me say, I love this for a beginner book. Like, it is so full of information. I don't know if you can see, yeah, you should be able to see that. I highlighted a bunch in here. Not so much toward the end, just because a lot of it, it does go into examples for spells and rituals and things like that. So I don't really need to highlight. I can just reference later. But this is really, really cool. And one of the things that I mentioned last time that um, I'll just mention real quickly again. The first two chapters, pretty much this much of the book, so a good chunk of it, is all like historical and contextual. And also goes into like this much is all about different forms of different types of magical beliefs around the world. Of course, you can't like take too long to get in depth on every single one. And some of them are kind of generalized. But I feel like even for a generalized view, she is very respectful and still gives us a lot of really good factual information. I found some things in here that I did not agree with. Uh, which is bound to happen. There's no such thing as a book that I am just like 100% going to agree with. Um, but for the most part, I was complete. I, I, I just absolutely love this book. I'll probably go back through it at a slower pace some at some point in the future. But it's just, it's so so informational. It's such a good modern witchcraft book. I would buy this for someone as their first book without a doubt, without a singular doubt, and be like, work through this like a textbook. Like, I love this. I want to find more things by Pamela Ball and I want to read them. That's how much I love this. I would easily give this a 4.5 out of 5. I might even push that up to a 5 out of 5. That's how much I liked this. So the next book um, that I finished this month was Witchcraft and Secret Societies of Rural England, The Magic of Toadmen, Plow Witches, Mummers, and Bonesmen by, my, by Nigel Pinnock. Uh, so I think I rated this like a one or a two on Goodreads. I th I think I like, in my head, I give it like a 1.5 out of five. Um, so this is, this is like such a clickbaity title. And the reason for that is because witchcraft is the first word. But myself and a few other people who left reviews about this on Goodreads noticed that witchcraft is like, it, it's like the background player. Like, it's not a main actor. It's not one of the primary roles. Witchcraft comes in a lot heavier in the last couple of chapters. The majority of the chapters focus more so on the secret societies, which is fair. Like. That's in there too, 
but it just seems like we went really heavy on the secret society and the rural and really light-handed with the magic and the witchcraft. Again, which is fine, but it's not so much what I was reading for. So the other complaint that I have with this with this book is that there are 18 pages worth of bibliography and it's like it's like a stacked full I don't know. That's probably too bright for you to see anything. It's like it's a crammed full bibliography. So it was obviously very well researched, but the problem is that he spits a bunch of facts at us and does not give any of his own interpretation of these facts. We don't get to get an in-depth look at really anyone who was a part of these societies. We may get a paragraph, maybe two, and I think for each chapter the author Nigel Pinnock might give like one sentence of his own viewpoint. And while some people may be like, well it's history, he's just trying to be non-biased. No, he's not trying to be non-biased. There is a very clear bias laid out in the introduction and the postscript of this book, which again is fine because he clearly lays it out. But then I expect to see that bias in the interpretation of all of his research. I don't want to just read a book of a bunch of facts. And this isn't a thick book either. It, it has a lot of pictures in it, but what ends up happening because we don't have his interpretation, because we don't have a very human experience sort of view of what it was like to be in these secret societies and live as one of these people in rural England, in historical rural England, because we don't get that viewpoint. I can't put myself in the shoes of those people. I can't have any sort of empathy. And also it's just boring. And that's kind of the saddest part because there is so much information. There is clearly a lot of passion that went into this project. Um, there's a lot of facts, but that's it. Like, I feel like this book hit the surface level as far as, like, a research, but he didn't give us anything else. And again, I come at this with the realization that there are just some things that we don't know. There's a lot of history that has been left out, and the author acknowledges this in the introduction because these were rural people. They weren't famous. They weren't royalty, they weren't rich, so we don't know a lot about them. But at the same time, there's 18 pages of bibliography, and you only stay on the same topic for maybe a page or two. I just, like, like there has to be more that could have been done with this, and it just makes me kind of sad. That's all the books that I legit finished. I'm close to finishing a couple more of my current reads. Actually, one of my current reads. Um, I'll start out with this one. I've kind of taken a pause on it just because I've been prioritizing other books. And I did just finish Natural Magic by Pamela Ball. This is another introductory book where I'm kind of reading it instead of a chapter a day. I'm more of taking this at like a chapter a week, week and a half, sort of. Um, but this is Natural Witchery, Intuitive, Personal, and Practical Magic by Ellen Dugan. And as you get towards the end of this, as I get toward the end of this, um, it's going to work a lot more like a workbook, which I am very, very excited about. I don't know if I'm going to write in the actual book yet or not. We'll see. This is a very interesting take. Oh, I'm actually, I'm a pretty good way into it. The chapters are pretty long, but the pages have a lot, again, I don't know if you can see that because it's so bright. The pages have a lot of white space. So even though the chapters are long, you kind of get through them quickly. 
I don't have a lot of thoughts on this one yet, so I'm going to keep it kind of short, but it's, it's definitely so far a different sort of introductory look at um, witchcraft. I would say that they, that Ellen Dugan leans really heavily on the intuitive nature of it, which I personally love. Um, that fits right in with my soul. So I'm excited to read more of this. I don't have a clear opinion about it yet though. So um, I'm enjoying it. And there we go. This is a little book that I was very excited to get. Um, by the way, I get the majority of my books used from thriftbooks.com. This one is definitely second hand. It's absolutely wonderful quality and not beat up at all. But yeah, so I got a little discount on my little book. But it is The Witch's Cauldron, The Craft, Lore, and Magic of Ritual Vessels by Laura Tempest Zarkoff. I think this was her first, like, book book. She has quite a few more now. She's a wonderful illustrator. I absolutely love the artwork in this. It's so... Oh my gosh, it's so adorable. Let me see if I can find another one. The the cauldron company at the beginning. Sorry about my shaky hands, but let me see if I can hold this up. Again, it's hard to see because it's bright and I don't feel like messing with my camera settings. So this is another one that I'm pretty still early on into it, but it starts out with history of cauldrons, different types of cauldrons, and then it's going to go into how to actually use cauldrons. Like this is a chunky little boy. This is a part of a series that Llewellyn published, I don't know how long ago, but anyways, they published this series and it's basically about different witchcraft tools. So I think the next one that I'm going to get after this is the little chunky book on besoms or the witch's broom. I love this. It's such a light, cute, fun read and it's informational and oh, this just warms my heart. Again, I'm not very far into it yet. I've, I've been kind of slow. I just started a new job. So like reading has kind of taken a back seat, but it's so cute and wonderful and I love it. Oh no! Ah, uh, dag nabbit! Well, pause. Hi there. So that was a good time to pause the video anyway. So I just cleaned up 12 ounces of spilled coffee from all over my desk and also all over the deck of oracle cards that I was going to show you today. But now they are all individually laid out so that they will hopefully dry and just have a nice little pretty coffee stained edging. I'm pretty sad. Anyway, carrying on wood. So the book that I have actually read the most of since our last Witchy Reads video is Code Red. Know your flow, unlock your monthly superpowers, and create a bloody amazing life, period. Uh, by Lisa Lister. She's the author of the book, which I need to read it. I haven't read it yet, but I would actually like to read it after getting into this. So this is where my bookmark is right now, but realistically, I'm probably more like this far into it because I skipped to a different chapter and read ahead. So there you go. I do what I want. But basically, this is what it sounds like. It is a book about the lady cycles and how we are magical. And I feel like I need to do a full review on this book. It's hard for me to just summarize it in a sentence or two. Let's read the back of it real quick, which I know that you can do, but whatever, we're here. I don't, I don't know how else to talk about this because I am uncomfortable talking about it. Uh, but that's why I'm reading this book. It's, it's been, it's been a challenging read, but like challenging in a good way. 
So yes, your period is way more than PMS, carb cravings, pain, and rage. It's actually a four-part code that once cracked will uncover a series of monthly superpowers which can be used to enhance your relationship with others, build a better business, have incredible sex, and create a bloody, bloody amazing life. Um, so she talks about kind of some of the magical implications, uh, societally and culturally. Um, yeah, I'm so uncomfortable talking about this. Like there have been passages in this book where I'm like, Ooh, no, no, don't say that. Like you're not supposed to say that. And a lot of that does come from like my conditioning and I am a big fan of keeping private things private. And that is not this book. But again, I mean, it's good to like step out of your comfort zone and read things that are challenging in this way. I will say that this book is not chocked full of lots of like factual information it's a it's very much so anecdotal which is lovely this definitely has a place um on my bookshelf and she gives tons and tons of recommendations throughout if you do want something a little bit more fact or science based um a little bit more anthropological versus just and sociological versus just kind of like personal stories it's it's very interesting. Again, I feel like I need to put my thoughts together more and maybe do an entire video dedicated to this book. Let me know what you think about that. I also got the corresponding journal um, and I just started journaling my cycle. This is a lot of personal information. Anyway, let me know if you want a more in-depth video on just this. I'll talk more about it whenever I'm finished with it. But just in the, um, as we're going along, it's a light, easy read. I'm enjoying it. Nothing crazy. So the next thing that I wanted to talk about was a deck that I got in my Witch's Moon subscription boxes. Yes, I did resubscribe to the Witch's Moon. I just really, really like that subscription box. I do. Um, and one of the amazing things that I got in the February box was the Oracle Deck Hedge Witches Filled Guide. And let me, let me just grab a card. You can see where I spilled the coffee on it. Let me fix the lighting because I do want you to be able to see this. Okay. So, sorry I'm shaky hands. I'm trying to stabilize it. But it's just very minimal. You have the type of plant there. I don't think she's gonna focus, whatever. And then you have kind of like defend. So what the plant represents. Oh, and this is the back of it. Very, very pretty. So the thing that I like about this is actually how much depth the author um, and the artist goes into for each plant, you get about two to three pages-ish, depending on the plant. Some of the medicinal purposes, some of the historical usages, where you can find it, other names it goes by, maybe some cultural uh, significance. It's a beautiful hardback book. I absolutely love using this. I love having it as just like a single card draw. Before I spilled coffee all over them, they were uh, very easy to shuffle, nice size, and yeah, I hopefully did not ruin them. And honestly, if I ruined them, I could, I could foresee myself just buying another replacement deck. So I did try using this deck. I hate it. Oh my god. Hate is a strong word, but I don't, I don't like using it. Again, I will, I will probably find some purpose for it, like, on, mm, what did I do? Oh yeah, on my altar, but man, these cards are impossible to shuffle because they're just so thick and large, like, and they, 
they just stick to each other like they're they're not good for shuffling even whenever I try to spread them out like they don't spread very well so whenever it comes to actually using these as like a card that I would draw from I personally don't like it I personally don't feel a lot from these cards I knew that I shouldn't have bought them. I don't know why I bought them. Yeah, I just wanted to give an update on that. I tried to use it once. That that once once was kind of enough. I don't know if I'll try to try again. We'll see. So, two books that I got that I have not started reading yet, but I am excited to start when the time is right. The first one is The Power of Myth by Joseph Campbell. Uh, this is a pretty well-known academic work. It's honestly something that I should have read in the past as an English major, but I haven't yet and I am interested in this from an academic perspective and also just in the way that I read myths and the way that I can interpret them and to just learn more about these myths and folklore that I'm basing my practice on. So I feel like this is going to be a good one. It's not too large, so I feel like I should be able to get it done in a couple weeks if I really button down and, and focus on it. We'll see how that works. But yeah, so I'm, I'm really happy to finally have this in my library. I've been wanting it for a while. I finally found like a good copy use, so there you go. And then the other book that I bought and also spilled coffee on, sorry, is Keeping Her Keys, An Introduction to Hecate's Modern Witchcraft, Hecate, however you pronounce it, I like Hecate, by Dr. Cindy Brannon. I've been watching Dr. Brannon's YouTube channel kind of off and on for a while now. I've been very interested in Hecate. Um, and this is definitely one of those books where you're supposed to work through it with like chapter a week or a chapter a month. I can't remember. I read the introduction and then I was just thinking to myself, it's not time yet. I have other things that I want to read before I really focus in and kind of dedicate to a practice like this. I could read it without like working through it like that, but I, 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 that's not how I want to read this. So I'm going to leave this on my bookshelf and visit her again when she's ready. Yeah, or when I'm ready. When we're all ready. <laughs> I spilled so much coffee on this. Oh my goodness. So this was a currently reading uh, in the last video. This is Celtic Myths and Legends by T.W. Rolleston. And um, I got through the section, the chapter that I was on about the Oltonian cycle. So I finished the Oltonian cycle chapter, which was, I mean, it was, it was a lot. It was almost a hundred pages. And I mean, this, this is a big book. So this is one that I'm taking slowly anyway. So probably over the next few weeks, I'll start on the next chapter, which is the Tales of the Oceanic Cycle. Yeah, and I'll work through that. This was definitely never going to be a book that I just read start to finish, like, consistently. I've kind of been working through this one over a lot of months. So I'll pick back up on it later. I, I'm still fully enjoying this. It's just I'm taking a break for now. I'll pick it back up on the Oceanic Cycles. Um, yeah, whenever I'm ready. But I did want to mention this since it was in my last video. And yeah, that I mean, that's the way I read. That's all that we have for today as far as witchy reads. Please let me know what you're reading. Let me know what you think about any of the books or decks that I talked about in this video. And if you do want to see a more in-depth uh, review of any of the books that I'm talking about, just let me know. I love, this started out as a booktube channel. I love reading. I'm an English major. I can talk about books all day long. I've done it before. So just let me know what you want. And thank you so much for joining me today. Please like, dislike, comment, subscribe, and have a magical rest of your day.